JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in digital infrastructure. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and we are live at Data Cloud Global Congress on the French Riviera. Beautiful can. When no you, better place like it. Just when you thought PTC was like top <laughs> shelf, and then all of a sudden this comes in, man, this is. <laughs> I mean, we still love, top. we definitely still love our friends over at PTC and can't Indeed. wait. We're actually Indeed. counting down to PTC. I love it. The countdown is on. We're what, six months away now? I'm still riding the energy from the last <laughs> one. And then we come here and it's, wow, a double whammy. This is great. Let me give you a formal introduction. Uh, joining me today, we have Mark Gusikov. Right? Said he it is better the than Chief me. Commercial Officer at the International Data Center Authority. Welcome back to JSA TV. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's an honor to always have you each Love and every here. show, Mark. So thank you again for joining us. You know, power is one of the key topics here at this conference, at PTC, just about every conference across our industry. And, you know, power sourcing is top of mind for operators globally. We're seeing it here. We have a global audience uh, on this floor today at all the panel sessions. What role do you see nuclear and other stable base load options playing in long-term energy strategies for the data center industry? I mean, we're talking about it every day. We are talking about it every day. I'm going to be on a panel at 1225 talking about what the power considerations are like here. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of differentiators globally. So it's one thing in North America to have one, you know, one way of looking at things, but even here in Europe, it's a completely different story. So it's a very geographical position that we're looking at right now. You know, at IDCA, when we're working with other countries and nations and trying to put a, a real power consideration into effect, um, we want to make sure that we're looking at the right geography for the right place. So I've been really fortunate and honored to work with folks like Brian Smith at Idaho National Labs, where we're looking at how we're going to deploy nuclear power at scale over the next several years. It's not enough to just hear people talking, oh yeah, we're going to have a deployment in two or three years, right. which really hasn't been happening. We've been hearing that for eight years. But what we need to do is understand how we can get power to the industry. And what that screams is really bridging. How are we going to bridge to get to nuclear over the next several years? And in the States, natural gas is really a, a front runner right now. Yeah, it Great people doing great things. Oklo's talking about how they're bridging. Yenbacher's got their uh, on-prem natural gas power gen. So with companies like this that are the front runners in innovation, they're the ones that I'm kind of gravitating with and towards to look for solutions and answers for how we're going to provide. In other countries in Asia Pacific, solar is a great resource. You know, and where I live in Buffalo, New York, it's cloudy all the time. Winter's <laughs> doom and gloom. We don't get 12 hours of direct overhead sunlight, but in Indonesia, 12 hours of direct over at sunlight every day is a great resource to be able to provide renewable energy and solar and other conditions. So it's a real geographical position that we're in. We've got to start yeah. thinking about it locally. Yeah, I mean, they say location, location, location. Yeah. Uh, it does, does dictate the power. That's right. Yeah. And used to be, you know, if you build it, they will come. Now everybody's building these populated data centers that already have the clients in. But how often are we hearing, well, you can build a data center, but you have to bring your own power with it. With that comes its own inherent challenges. We've got to be on top of regulations, we've got to be on top of Definitely. siting requirements, and then who's going to pay for the thing as well? I, as, as you know, I don't like to talk about the problems. I like to talk about solutions. So yeah. working with DOE, working with DOD, working with Idaho National Labs, that's kind of the path I've chosen to create the solutions for the industry. Yeah, and it's so important. I mean, power is the key. Time to power, yeah. speed to power. Uh, getting that power and globally it's more and more of a challenge so what you're doing is very important and operational excellence is core to IDCA's mission what best practices are you seeing among top performing facilities especially as demands for uptime and sustainability of course sustainability yeah. uh, increase boy you're hitting on a lot of really cool buzzwords that I love mm -hmm. hearing so thanks for the gentle plug on that um, I'm seeing across the industry na nationally, we're not just looking at digital infrastructure anymore. It's really all about the global digital economy. And when you think about what the next form of currency is, it's, it's data. You know, gold has kind of come and gone. Uh, we're past that. Now data is really the currency that we're using to drive. 
Um, human capital is certainly part of that IP. So getting the right people trained and the right approaches, the work we're doing at Nomad Futurist as well, and the things that we're doing uh, to bring the next round of emerging talent in is very important in that front. It's, it's critical, actually. Critical. Yeah. With, a, with a workforce deficit approaching 330,000 by 30, uh, 2030, we're going to need to be on top of this. But the things that I'm seeing that are very different than they were a few years ago, all of the people that I'm working with at IDCA that want professional services and want to be a certified entity, they're not just looking at, are we resilient? Are we redundant? And are we operationally stable? It's a lot more than that. It's more about how do those pieces play together? If you're concurrently maintainable in your condition, but your PUE is 1.8, that is not good enough. That is not acceptable anymore. No. And how does that affect your sustainability initiative? And how does that affect your growth and scalability? At IDCA, we look at all these elements across seven different layers of efficacy so that we can analyze and assess how people are operationally excellent and have certain criteria for allowable areas of risk because everybody's not going to be completely perfect. Yeah. But certainly if you're Los Alamos National Laboratories and you're making anthrax versus a Bitcoin miner, you can have differentiating layers of allowable areas of risk. And those are the things that I'm seeing right now across the industry that people are asking for assessment on allowable area of risk. That's the new advent. That's where we're headed. Yeah, that is definitely where we're headed. I mean, especially when you mentioned human capital and all these things that are so important to keeping the industry moving forward and keeping that operational excellence uh, paramount. So with next-gen infrastructure on the rise, how is IDCA supporting workforce development to ensure the talent pipeline, as we keep talking yeah. about, uh, keeps pace with the advantages of, I'm going to say it, the A word, AI, yeah. uh, automation and renewable integrations? AI is still a bit of a mystery, despite the fact that it's been around for years. Everybody's talking about it like it's been here. I mean, 10 years ago, I was doing artificial intelligence deployment and manufacturing and real-time machine learning and visualization. Now we're taking the data, we're aggregating it, and we're learning what to do with it. So that's I think that's something new that we're understanding and learning how to manipulate the data. Right. But from an operation perspective on the human capital side, IDCA is really teaching everyone to speak the same language and come to a common place. There's a lot of training out there that people can go through that are predicated on professional services. We really look at data center infrastructure specialists as the starting point. So our DCIS program gets people into an entry program where people are all speaking the same language. Okay. My favorite part about this part of the program is it's the starting point that everybody must go through, but we're finding accountants, people in HR, uh, engineers, maintenance facilities folks, uh, front office folks, sales CEOs, all of these people can start off at the base level so they understand what the language is that everyone else in the industry is speaking. I, and not to name drop, but I was talking to Gary Connolly this morning. He said a great thing about communication. He's renaming PUE. You know, he's not, not okay. no longer just calling it right, you know, what, what PUE is, but it's all of us about speaking the same language yeah. and everybody understanding and speaking from the same place. Let's get rid of some of the acronyms. And if you're not going to train people what the acronyms are and take the time to stop and explain it to them. No one's going to understand this. So we're really walking people through two different paths. We're walking people through a path of operations and a path of engineering. Now, at some point, those two paths converge and they meet, and you get into management, and then eventually get into supervisory. And then you get into multiple site supervisory and management. And then ultimately, you can become a trainer. So we're looking at training the entire globe in the way that we understand and know how to certify people our best asset right now in the industry, but how we can get people together speaking the same language and all pulling together in the industry. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, people do speak the same language, uh, especially like you mentioned, all the different acronyms right now. So, some acronyms have multiple meanings and it is so confusing. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Gary's know, analogy was please use English. I think it was <laughs> what he said. Yeah, I love it. Please use yeah, English. Please use English was what uh, he renaming says. the PUE. Yeah. And uh, supporting the next generation, the next generation of infrastructure, human capital is, is critically important. Indeed. I love everything that you're doing. Is there anything else you want to add today? I mean, our, our work with Nomad Futurists as a partner, as ambassadors, uh, are helping to solve sure. some of that talent gap here in our industry. Because as we continue to grow, we need more people. 
Absolutely. I'm so honored to be a part of this. Um, you know, be a you know, be the chief certification officer for International Data Center Authority, where we are partnered with the iMasons on the scholarship uh, program that they have and working with them to get people through training, as well as Nomad Futurist, where we are demystifying digital infrastructure for emerging talent, have a job board. Human capital is our IP. We're working with people to put them through the process. Um, boy, am I blessed to be as busy as I am. One day I'll take a nap. Maybe I'll take a nap when I'm dead. But, we'll take a nap uh, on the plane home. <laughs> and while we're hard. here in Cannes, let's enjoy it. And uh, where can viewers go, Mark, if they'd like to learn more about your organization absolutely. and so, your Nomad Futurist? Absolutely. So International Data Center Authorities, wwwidc dash a.org and Nomad Futurist, www.nomadfuturist.org. Mark, always such a pleasure so to, to speak you. to you I here on JSA TV. Such a great job. Thank you. Uh, always a pleasure, especially here in Cannes, for the biggest and best Data Cloud Global Same Congress, the 20th anniversary. Congratulations to our friends and partners at Data Cloud here, Global. Here. And viewers, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV from Cannes, France. Happy networking. See you next time.